We've got mail. Good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. It's mail time again. Yes, that time when I get to talk about miscellaneous subjects like what people sent me in the mail and maybe other things we'll get to. We haven't done one of these in about a month, so welcome back. Let's do mail time. Well, okay, let's look at some of the mail that we got in in the last month or so. Well, this is a, a little letter from Paul Hopper. I got it around May 7th. I try to put a, a, a date stamp on most of these and when I get them, if I'm good about it. I'm not always good about it. Okay, so uh, Paul has been experimenting with finding some of the better papers that will enable his typing to work better with his typewriter. And this is uh, some of this True Red brand copy paper from Staples Office Supply Store, typed with his Remington Travel Writer. This is a 92 brightness paper, and he likes it. Uh, the brightness of it looks, uh, sounds like it's pretty inexpensive. And, uh, you know, of course, he has a problem with a hard platen on his, and you might be able to see the holes that uh, some of the letter letters are having uh, due to that. But it actually works pretty well with correction tape. As you can see, the white correction tape works pretty well with this paper. So that's one benefit of it. And then he's uh, also experimenting with this 32-pound connoisseur collection, 100% cotton resume paper. This is made by Southworth and he says the slogan on the box is because it's important. But he got this at the thrift store for five dollars and on Staples website it looks like the equivalent paper is about um, 15 cents a sheet roughly if you get it in the 250 sheet boxes. And then this is the white correction tape on this gray paper. Uh, but what he likes about it is the heaviness of this paper is that it doesn't punch through. So this thinner copy paper, it punches through on the back side, but this heavier paper doesn't. And so he's saying that it makes the paper double-sided. That is, he can type on both sides with his current machine that has a really hard platen. And I think that's a really good solution, finding a little bit heavier paper that makes the typing a little more thrifty, even though the paper up front, this heavier paper might appear to be more expensive, but being able to type on both sides, it mitigates that cost. And that's a really good idea. And he leaves uh, with this comment, uh, we spend our money on buying typewriters and fixing them up, and then find the cheapest paper to use. Tell me, what are our words worth? And that's a really great thought, Paul. I thank you very much for that. And yeah, you're right, I think using a little bit better quality typing paper makes all the difference in the world. Okay. We have another letter from our friend Javier in California. And he includes a couple little fun items in his letter. First of all, we have a Canadian penny and a dime, a one cent and ten cent coin. That's pretty cool, huh? I like those. And then we have a nice little typed note and something special here we'll look at in a minute. So this is typed on a Disney themed paper. And he's saying, Dear Mr. Van Cleve, how are you doing? I am doing fine. Right now I am typing this letter on the rocket outside my little backyard. Did you, I did get your email on how amazing was the new type dollar. And so he made some type dollars, and which he has another one here for us in a minute. So he's also making mention of somebody sent some crow bucks bills in one of my recent mail times and the crow bucks is kind of an inspiration it sounds like for the typing dollars he's also uh, giving me recommendations though for my uh, fourth of july video i should do on celebrating the usa's birthday and showing uh, typewriters new to my collection what's currently in my collection that is a really good idea i think i'll do that and here's the typing dollar so this is typing money one type dollar this is the typing ribbon uh, in typewriters, we trust Joe VC, Vice President of Treasury, and Javier is the President of the Treasury. Of course he would be, yes. And here is the one type dollar United States of America reserve seal. I like the little picture, little cat in the hat stamp, and printed May 8th, 2021. Uh, very cool. I'm going to treasure my typing dollars. Yes, those are very precious, very, very precious. Okay. Now we have a letter from Danny Schwartz, who lives in Germany, and it's very cool hearing from people from overseas. We have a little enclosure here. Danny types this letter on a really nice piece of lined paper, and 
he has adjusted the typewriter, it looks like, so the lines of type are staying well within the ruled lines on the paper. He calls this the mystery machine. He dated his letter 15th of May. I received it around the 4th of June, so a few weeks it took to get over here. He's talking about he has a new typewriter. Can I guess what it is? Because he writes on the envelope of this thing, read the letter first, right? And it is a 1924 Corona 4. Oh, very cool. And he goes on to talk about he likes my Royal KMM, and also he has a, an Optima 10 typewriter with some extra digit keys, which is really cool. I really enjoyed uh, these letters from people overseas. And what he included in this enclosure here were some photos. So this is his Corona 4. That's a beautiful machine right there. And here is the typewriter with its case, and look how shiny the typewriter is. Oh, that's pretty. And, of course, this is Bruno, his dog. That is a beautiful animal. I like getting these little pictures in the mail with letters. It's a lot of fun. It, it just adds something to the normal letter. And I was going to mention also here before I put Danny's letter down that I've been in the habit of opening letters with a special set of scissors or shears that makes this scalloped edge and it kind of helps me to blow the envelopes open a little bit easier. I think there's something aerodynamic and something happens there where you can open it up easier. At least that's my theory. At least when you grab it after you've opened it, if you grab the envelope you can easily tell which side is open right there. Okay. Fantastic. Well, here is another letter, a postcard from Paul Hopper. This is typed on his brother Charger 11, and he found this postcard at the Railroad Museum in Paris, California. And this is the Pacific Red electric car that is right there. It was an electric train car used in a passenger rail system that ran through four Southern California counties. You know, you know, Southern California had a history of public transit uh, right around World War II, but afterwards, you know, things changed. There's a whole backstory to that, and they ended up being automobile-centric, but really like the postcard. That's really cool. Thank you. Okay, a letter from Brian Okabayashi of San Bernardino, California. And so Brian has been writing me periodically over the last couple years, and he's talked about... Uh, told me about him is working toward a law degree. I won't read the details of the letter, they're kind of personal, but he does now have a job. He's passed the bar exam. He has a job with a law firm in California, and I'm really proud of him. Thank you very much, Brian, for sending me the update, and it's a great seeing the story as it progresses from one letter to the other over a period of several years. Now, man, you've made that major goal happen, and he has a career in the law business. Really good. Another letter in the last month from Javier, and it is a nice one, so we open it up here. Oh, you notice his handwriting here. He has a fountain pen he's using, that's right. I think he mentions that in the letter. How's my channel doing? I had sent him some Apple stickers, and he really loved them. Thank you very much. So school's over, and now he's going to be doing some reading over the summer, and using his typewriter, and working on his spelling, and he just got two new books, and it's from the uh, Goosebump series. The, the one he's mentioning here is called Monster Blood. The Goosebump series are great to read. And uh, he was talking here about how in the elementary school library, uh, some of the pictures he would see in the books would make him scared. It was hard to go to sleep. But now he sees them as amazing illustrations. And that is really cool that you can connect the artwork to the work of the literature of the book itself. And then uh, he liked the fountain pen cleaning video that I did recently. And he did use a fountain pen on his return address. Very neat. So another great letter from Javier. Oh! Have I heard of the Aztec death whistle? You know what? I have not heard of the Aztec death whistle. I'm going to have to check it out, do some internet research, but thank you for the letter and for all the communication you send me. I appreciate it very much. Well, we got a box in from my fellow typist, Diane Mayer. 
it's not an unboxing here. I've already opened it, so I've spoiled the whole surprise for you. Okay, now I'm going to let you in on a secret. The secret to television and film production is most of it is fake. Sorry to break the news. So I'm just going to open it up, and the first thing that I saw in there was this really nicely handwritten letter from Diane. I really like the pen she's using. It looks kind of like a gel pen, but it might be a fountain pen. I can't quite tell. Anyways, I like her handwriting, by the way. She included this bag of coffee. Now, she bought some black wing pencils, the story goes, and it came with this special black wing blend of coffee from Timeless Coffee in Oakland, California. And uh, so she doesn't drink coffee, so she sent me the, the beans. And I had some of it this morning, actually, on my AeroPress. Really love the beans. They're actually kind of chocolatey tasting, which is really cool. Really appreciate it, of course. But then we have another goodie here. Besides the coffee and the nice letter, we have Kodak Poly Contrast Filter Kit the Model A filter kit. Open it up here. So first thing you'll notice, of course, the Kodak yellow uh, packaging, but it's a black lined cardboard box. Hmm, that might come in handy in the future. There are some instructions with it, right? And so what it is, this is a filter set for, for using on your enlarger. And then, I'm going to pull the liner out so we can get to the main article here, which is the set of these multi-contrast printing filters. And so what these have is there's a little plastic frame. It has the contrast grade on the frame. And then there is a plastic colored, it's a rigid hard uh, filter inside the frame, right? So. Uh, the, the current filters you typically get are the Ilford ones, and they're just flexible gels. But this is a little harder, rigid kind, a little thicker, and probably scratch less easily. But the idea is that this suspends from your enlarger lens, and then it will fit in, the filter fits in like that. And you can uh, easily uh, put the color filters in to control the contrast of your image as you're printing. And one other little cool feature about this is not only are the filters all in order, but there are a set of holes inside the box where you can mount this box on the wall of your darkroom uh, next to your enlarger, and then they're just there, right there, ready reference, so I'm going to print grade two, stick it in the holder on your enlarger. So this is going to be really handy, actually very practical. I'm going to start using this in my uh, darkroom, and which of course implies that I also need to uh, kind of get back into the darkroom and doing a little more printing, huh? So Diane, your gift is going to definitely spur me on to do a little bit more printing in the darkroom, and I really need to be doing that. Thank you very much. Oh, you notice the other box is also black. So, hey, maybe there is a pinhole camera in my future here. Hmm. One other thing that Diane included in her package to me that she didn't really mention in the letter was a typewriter spool, a metal typewriter spool. And the size of the hole, it looks almost like it could be for Olympia or something. Not quite sure, but anyways, it's nice having the metal spools. You put a modern, well-inked ribbon on the metal spools, and you just, it gives you just a lot of life in these spools because they do have the little metal um, hook on the inside for attaching the ribbon to. And the problem with the plastic spools isn't so much the hub of the spool or the disc part, but it's really on the plastic modern spools that little hook usually breaks off and uh, not so with the metal ones. They're nice and strong. So thank you Diane very much. So there's another special person in my life and that is my friend Bill Teft and he recently gave me this Bosch and Loam magnifying loop. So with a little uh, paracord kind of uh, attachment here, but this is made in the USA, the old Bosch & Loam from the classic days of Bosch & Loam. A high quality glass loop. This is a 10x loop. And, you know, I've been actually having a lot of fun with this, not only using it for its intended purpose, you know, of uh, holding it close to my eye and, 
you know, looking at things close up, but I also discovered that I can use it <laughs> on my cell phone as a close up macro lens. So I've gotten uh, practiced with holding my phone with the uh, little loop over the camera lens of the phone and it's really kind of cool. You can make it into kind of an ad hoc little microscope of, of uh, sorts. Right? A little microscope kind of attachment. So that's kind of cool. I uh, really like that. That's, this thing comes in really handy and of course it also serves as a regular loop. Nice and tiny. Thank you, Bill. I really appreciate it. Well, <clears throat> I didn't actually get these in the mail. This is my grandson got these in the mail. And so first of all, these are a collection of little candies. And this is uh, from a company called Russian. And this is uh, Joyzy Cherry uh, Chewy Candies is what that is. And they're really yummy. That's like a caramel, a chewy caramel with a fruit flavor on the inside. This one was Roshan Minky Binkies. And this is toffee filled with blueberry uh, flavored gel. This was absolutely a fantastic candy. Really loved it. And let's see, this green one is the is a chewy, uh, don't know what flavor it is. I'm going to have to try it out. But Oh, it's apple, green apple. Uh, flavored chewy candies. Really love these actually. I'm going to have to look for them. I have a local cost plus importer in, in, in town here. I'm going to have to try it out. And then it came with this, I think this is Polish if I'm not mistaken, uh, and I won't even attempt to pronounce these, but it looks like a cherry flavored uh, jello, a gelatin uh, that you mix up. And that looks really interesting. Okay, I'm going to have to have fun with that later on. Okay, this next item I actually did not get in the mail. I actually got it from my friend Ethan Moses. And this is actually a light panel that he made. Uh, he had the circuit board uh, printed in China and he solders on all the little surface mount LEDs. It has a set of feet here and there is a, a input voltage input jack. He supplied me with a with an AC adapter to run it, and he, this is actually used with the uh, film scanner uh, thing where you use a digital camera uh, to scan film, and this is like a backlight for that purpose. Now, what I noticed is, of course, and, and Ethan warned me about it, this translucent plastic surface is very sensitive to scratches, so what I decided I would do, and Ethan's probably laughing at me right now thinking, you idiot, I'm, I I'm keeping this inside a plastic baggie uh, to kind of protect the surface against scratches. And what's funny about this is I've poked a hole through there so I can actually run the AC adapter. This is a 9 volt adapter and yeah, it's really bright and it actually works as a video light as well as a backlight for film scanning. But it'll also run on 12 volts, even brighter on 12 volts and of course it gets a little warm on 12 volts. But it's a really cool light panel that Ethan made and I really like it. It also has some embedded magnets, some of these uh, fancy magnets and you can use magnet magnets to mount the, the film uh, uh, frame onto this that he made. So anyways, a really cool little LED light panel that I can use either as a, a video light or, uh, you know, actually for film scanning. And I should also point out that this is my current backlog of unanswered cards and letters. <laughs> uh, well over a dozen items in here, maybe two dozen, I don't know. But uh, that tells you I got some work cut out for me and answering letters. I better get to it. So one little thing I'll mention before we close here. I move over. Yeah, I was working on a way to put a camera right over the table and then have it adjustable. So I have this Bogan tripod over here, right? Heavy duty tripod and I'm using the Bogan hex plate, hex mounting plate. This block of wood has a quarter 20 uh, tripod nut in there and then this is adjustable you can kind of adjust this piece of wood back and forth the balance point I have a 10 pound barbell weight that slides over this and you can uh, hold it in place with this clamp if you want to put a heavier camera on the other end and counterweight it and it's not just any barbell weight it's a Jack LaLanne barbell weight
Anyways, I'm using this Joby Gorillapod uh, ball head mount that I use for most of my cameras. And so, for instance, this particular video, I'm using the little El Cheapo Canon Vixia 800 camcorder with a little El Cheapo wide angle lens. Anyway, that's kind of how it fits onto there. And uh, not that this is interesting to any of you guys, probably, but anyways. So you can move the tripod back and forth, up and down, and you can like to bring this up and then you can alter the ball head so the camera is nice and vertical and you have room underneath it to do your little thing and talk to it and everything. And so that's kind of how I've been uh, doing my overhead shots lately. Well, that was mail time plus a little bit extra. Keep those cards and letters coming can't promise I'll write you very quickly, but as you saw, I have quite a backlog and I do need to start answering some letters. But until next time, stay creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.